Well, we're back with part two with David Hayter. Yay. And uh, two good things. Thank you guys for all the new. We have so many new subscribers. Yes, thank you so you much. You guys are coming out of the woodworks. We love it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should Just do that do now because we like that. Yes, and I do. wanted to bring up real quick Stacy's shoes because oh. I, I just noticed them from last week that she's wearing these shoes Thanks. that she wore on the couch for the very first promo picture that we did for VO Buzz Weekly five years ago. Yeah. So these cool. started the show. They're still lovely and sexy and hot and all that and stuff. comfortable. Absolutely. Thanks, Chuck. Shall we get and buzzed? And so is David Hayter. Let's get buzzed. <laughs> Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Obviously, okay, yes, you got your, your first job, you know, but I mean, when you've had times when you, when it was slower or was more challenging. Sure. Um, you know, for somebody watching who's maybe hitting a dip, I mean, what kind of, how did you ride that through? What, what do you? Yeah, well, I mean, it took me a good eight or nine years. I mean, it took me nine years before I was supporting myself. I mean, I had years where I'd do 10 episodes of Spider-Man or something, and that would sort of pay my bills here yeah. and there. But I was pretty broke. And, and really, when I took the job answering the phones on X-Men, I was at my lowest point. I thought, mm -hmm. this career's not working out. I can't work any harder than I did on Burn. I, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, and it w I'd never taken a nine to five job before, so I figured, well, at least it's in the industry, so I mm -hmm. took the job answering phones, and of course, that's when everything exploded, but I literally could not have been any lower at that point um, when, I, when I got, uh, so I had auditioned for Metal Gear, and I got a phone call from Jennifer Hale saying, guess who's gonna make some money, and I was like, is it me? Because I'm hoping it's me. Because I didn't have any money, and and then I she told me I had booked uh, Metal so Gear, awesome. so which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, I in no way felt like the next thing I was going to do was star in a huge series of games, or yeah. that the next next thing I was going to do would, would be to write giant blockbuster movies. So yeah, you know, it, I'm always conflicted about this because. You know, there are some people for whom the business is not right. You know, it's too stressful. It's too, you know, whatever, whatever. whatever. Well, there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of rejection. You have to be able to well, just deal with that. And, you, and you instability. Know. Well, and also, some people are just not cut out to be, you know, I wanted yeah. to be Tom Cruise. Well, the fact is, I'm not Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. He Everything he does is right. amazing the way he looks the way he moves that's a movie star and that yeah. wasn't really what i was so what i wanted to do was not something i was particularly suited for did you uh, actually recognize that is that well eventually that you... i recognized it because I've now now i act in whatever i want to act in and yeah. and and so I've, I've been in movies or whatever and i do fine and i get good reviews but nobody's yeah. ever been like oh my god that's the next johnny depp or whatever yeah so so yeah i've kind of come to that realization that thank god i was able to write you right. know? Yeah. Right. and um so uh, you know some people and and that's what i'm saying that's the hard truth is that some people want to be on camera actors and maybe they're better suited for voiceover or maybe they're better suited for publicity or maybe they're better suited to be agents or or whatever and people don't want to hear that and people want to believe in that that lightning strike that's going to change your life yeah. so i'm always conflicted telling my story because yes it can happen yes your life can turn around in a second but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to you know you you that's the risk you take when you commit to a life in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. you yeah. could be living in a one bedroom apartment at 50, you know, struggling Absolutely. to get under five appearances mm -hmm. on a sitcom or, or, right. or whatever. Right. It happens to a lot of people. I always say we have the best looking 50 year old bartenders in the world, you know, yeah. and because um, so many people come out here. So, you know, so I, I want to be encouraging, but at the same time, well, no, you know, but I think too. No, but that's real. You you have to keep it real, right? And, and people and people need to understand that you're pro you're gonna suffer. I mean, even when you're successful, you're yeah. gonna suffer. You know, there's just sure. it's it's always stressful. It's always high stakes. Um, 
some things will work, some things won't, and it's always, you know, you're just putting your heart out there exactly. to be stomped on time and again, and it's a very public mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, business. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, it, you know, you were open enough to say, okay, this is what I thought, this is the lane I was in, mm -hmm. but the universe is telling me, and you were at least open to be fluid enough to say, well, let me see what's over here instead of no, no, because I think sometimes people are resistant. They're like, totally. this is what I'm doing. Yeah. There's no plan. You know, it's like, well, you never know because over there, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Try it. You don't, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and, missing something yeah, and before you're, you know, before I was 30, I was like, oh, you know, I would never quit acting. You can't ever quit. You have to be, no, I'm like, if you're not happy doing it, quit, you know, or do yeah. something else. Or, or, yeah. or, you know, when we made Burn, I found out that I was a good producer. And so people were telling me, oh, you should be a producer. I'm like, no, I'm an actor. It's, that's what I do. And so, but that producing experience led to being, you know, a, uh, was part of what being a screenwriter is about as well, yeah, to a yeah. certain extent. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, you need yeah, to be flexible. You need to take those risks. Lined up, they were all lining up. You didn't know it. You thought it was the nope. end of your life. That's right. They were all <laughs> lining up, and all yeah. of a sudden you're like, yeah. oh my god, I got to become something else. And bam, you did. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, it and and well, it sort of came to me. Uh, <laughs> while I was still kind of flailing around, wondering where I was going to get my next agent, and yeah, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. all of that. So, yeah, but, uh, but yeah. So, to be uh, to go to the optimistic side, that nine years of struggle and whatever, all of those, all of those jobs and all of those auditions and all of those scripts that I wrote that nobody ever read, all of that went into sort of preparing me to be what, I, what I am Absolutely. now. Absolutely, and Absolutely. I bet you you appreciate the heck out of what you have now. Oh well, yeah. Have gone, you know, mm -hmm. having gone through all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I I feel badly for for kids who who hit at seventeen. Yeah. 19, 20, or whatever, you know, and think, oh, it's easy, it'll always I mean, be easy, exactly. I can blow my money on whatever. Mm -hmm. There's just no way to have any perspective yeah, on man. what your whole life is going to be or how long your life is going to be. Right, yeah. Life right. is long, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and sometimes you'll be up and sometimes you won't, so. Anyway. That's really cool, man. It's good stuff. Like right. you just said, you know, all these, these nine years of all this stuff that you were doing prepared you for, you know, probably what you're doing today and all the success that you've had. Did you learn anything through that time, which I'm sure you did? People out there, man, they haven't gone through everything that you did, right? So, no. so they don't well, know, you know, they don't know sometimes, you know, is there, is there a formula? Is there, is there, is there, is there a way to think to become successful? You know, um, uh, what do you feel was your thing that helped you become successful? Not quitting or, you know, pouting, through that yeah yeah i think there I, that was extremely well said uh, i i think <laughs> He's a nice that guy. <laughs> i think that there are um, you know there are certain things people say perseverance you know is is important and it is yeah. um, you know don't be afraid to fail uh, cuz you probably will time and again until yep. until you succeed and you know it was jennifer hale said an amazing thing to me we were in our 20s and she was already a top top voice actress yeah and she said, and you know, she was like a hero to me, and I was, I couldn't even imagine making that kind of money or working all that, working that much. And she said one day, she said, I'm gonna go back to a place of being a beginner. You know, instead of walking in and being like, I'm a pro, I'm on top of this or whatever, I'm gonna go back to uh, anything I don't know, I wanna find out. Right. And I think that's, that's just an incredibly valuable, mm -hmm thing you know because yeah. I and and so I've tried to carry that through so now I've worked on you know tons of movies and and all sorts of things and and yet I'm still refining my writing style I'm still yeah. learning things about how to do it better still learning how to be a better actor you know to to not think that the key is mindless confidence yeah. you know right, right. confidence is important mm -hmm. and and that's that's another key to it but being open to being able to be wrong or being able to do it incorrectly or learning a new thing is yeah. is really important. Well, confidence that and arrogance important. are two different things. Yeah, that's exactly what I say, and and uh, so lean lean towards confidence. And, Absolutely, yes. And Beautiful. that should Love do it. well. So obviously, you have to go through your whole process when you're pitching things. You know, everything's unique. I understand that, but can you give kind of just an idea of like what hoops you have to jump through to get on a project? 
A writing project? Yeah. Uh, you know, every every element is different. Right. Um, well, there's the the bigger the job, the more multitudinous the hoops. Um, so, <laughs> you know, what you do is um, if you're working on a feature, if you want to get a feature, for example, you you uh, I'm given a lot of adaptation, so I read the source material, I mark down what I think are the key story points and character turns, all those things, and then I write out a 10-page outline, I go over it and over it until it's about a 15, 20-page outline, um, and, then I, and then I go in and, and pitch it. Um, uh, the one I was doing today actually was brought to me by a very big um, movie star, which is unusual. Um, which you can't talk about, no. right? Which I can't talk about, unfortunately. Oh, that's the word. And I'm Maybe sorry. Maybe by the time. Can you give us initials? No, I'm no. just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I probably shouldn't. But no. um, don't. don't. We We're don't want you getting do. in trouble. But uh, but I got a call saying this actor really likes you, and would you be interested in this uh, comic book series? And so I it was like, yeah. So uh, so I read it, pitched it out to the actor's company a couple of times. We went back and forth a couple of times. And then today I went into the studio to, mm -hmm. to pitch it out. Um, on a TV show now, uh, you go in, you pitch it, uh, and what, they'll, what they're doing a lot more now is, so we pitched a show to Universal, and they said, great, we love it. So they make what's, what's this isn't pornographic, but it's an if-come deal. Uh, and I'm like, well, I don't know. It's called an if come deal. It's called an if come deal, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, and I'm not sure I'm willing to agree to that. Yeah. But I don't, I won't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. If whatever's in between the if, uh, I'd like to clarify. Um, no, it's an if come deal, which means you uh, you make the deal with the studio. You take six months negotiating what all the money is going to be, what you're going to be paid in the fifth year of the series, but they pay you nothing. Mm. Then. Once all that's done, you have to go back and repitch to all the networks. So I set it up with a studio, you pitch it to the networks. So the network says, okay, we want to do that show. They're forced to take this deal that I've made with the oh. studio. Mm. So that's just endless hoops. I mean, that's right, just right. totally, right. you know, you, you, could, you could pitch it to eight studios, finally get a deal. They make this stiff gum deal, and then you go out to 10, 12 networks, and Maybe it comes together, maybe yeah. it doesn't. So, if, so yeah. if the network says, yeah, we want to do it, they have to take that if come yes. deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do they know what that deal is before they say yes? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, they do. Yeah. yeah, they do. And it's <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> cool. Well, they're not going to take on anything where they don't know what all the costs are. But I mean, yeah. you know, typically they know if I go to a network, they have an idea what I'll cost, and it's not mm -hmm. anywhere outside of that. It's, it's, you know, somebody at my level makes a certain amount, and they just take that yeah. in stride. It's a, yeah. whether or not they want to make the show. But um, exactly. But yeah, so we. I mean, I think I'm closing a deal right now with a studio, if come deal that um, that I think we've been working on for seven, eight months. Mm. You know, yeah. so I, I don't know if I'll get paid for it yeah. in six months or or never. You know. Yeah. It's so. why the term labor of love was Absolutely. coined. Absolutely. That's, that's right. Uh, David, that's right. You how hope much, it will birth. How <laughs> much do you love what you do? I, I love it. Uh, On the scale of one to ten. Beyond, beyond, the, beyond the numerical abilities mm. of man. I, 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 I love uh, my job, my life. Um, I'm so glad. I've had I had a couple of friends who became big stars. Yeah. Um, I was friends with Charlize Theron when she said, "I'm going to try acting," and I was like, "Yeah, good luck." And um, then she did fine. Yeah. yeah. And she's, she's still not okay. doing too bad. You know, I was friends with Kevin Spacey with uh, some people who became really, really big stars, and and that's amazing. And obviously, you know, they make a lot of money and they do very well. But the intrusion on your life is so intense yeah. mm -hmm. that I'm so glad I didn't become Tom Cruise. That you know that that goal of mine was kind of a foolish 20-year-old's dream, and what I've got is a little bit of video game fame, a little bit of writer's fame, screenwriter money, and so I get all of the perks and really none of the hassles. And yeah, and tons life. of if yeah. come deals. And tons of if come, oh, dude. <laughs> Which is freaking, that's I'm awesome. Out of my May ear. I just tell you I've that now this will road. be so the sorry. phrase sorry. that will be I know, in I know. our it's a great, lives it's, a, it's just a great phrase. He will use it to be like a drinking game. I'm gonna start having my own if come deals <laughs> yeah they're not as satisfying as they sound um yeah so uh, so yeah no I, I i you know it's a pretty remarkable 
life. And you know, and for people that become screenwriters and yeah. are like, all I ever do, I'm just in my room and mm -hmm. I never talk to anybody and uh, you know, I get that, but then I get to go out and be in a little movie or I get yeah. to do a video yeah. game right. or I yeah. get to play and, and or I get to go to Comic Cons, which a lot of screenwriters don't get to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's, it's yeah. a pretty it's great really life. It's really cool, man. And the reason why I asked you that is because we didn't even have that as a question is because I can tell, and I'm sure Stacy can, can too, and I'm sure all those people mm -hmm. out there can as well, we can tell that you really, really <laughs> genuinely love what you do. You have a I carry still, my contentment with me. Yeah. Still, you have this like huge passion for what you do, and you're happy. Yeah. That is true. And that comes and I, through. And I do. And then, but to apply this to people who want to do what I do, part of the way that you sell a movie or a TV show is enthusiasm. And, yeah. um, and to, you know, it's not necessarily the story that gets me the job, it's the, it's the glint in my eye, it's, the, it's, it's me leaning forward and saying, if we do this, right. we're all gonna be rich. Exactly. You know, and people are like, yeah. great, yeah, 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 great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, and you should enjoy your life. I mean, it's, it's you know, if you're lucky enough to, to, to do what you love and, 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 you know, and people are nice to you all over the world, why not enjoy yeah. that? Why not, not a bad day, not a bad day. So cool, man. So, yeah, I love cool. it. Thanks, man. So, while you have this super secret spy life, <laughs> is there anything that you have coming up or appearances that you want to let people know about? Uh, yeah. Um, that are I, well, legal to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I, all of the writing things are super secret until they come out or, or don't come out. Yeah. Um, but I am uh, appearing finally in a game called The Long Dark, uh, yeah. which is a big uh, Canadian uh, video game, which I'm very, very excited about. And um, I'll be appearing at a few Comic Cons this year. I'm doing. Uh, I think Oahu, which will be nice. Uh, nice. Uh, Washington D.C., which will be a lot less nice. Yep. Um, uh, and then Toronto Fan Expo in September. That's isn't that um, that's a huge one, right? Yeah, it's huge. I did it last year, and wow. that's my hometown, so that yeah. that's always a lot of fun. Cool, man. He's coming home, everyone. I'm so all you Start fans, the get signs. out there and go check out our boy here. <laughs> that's right. Tell him Chuck and Stacy sent you. He'll give you a free autograph. That's wow. exactly right. Such a pleasure. Wow. Okay, so uh, David, this is the little mystery question. Yeah, please. Pick a card, and you Let's can see. read it yourself. You can read it in a character. Read, I can it, read it as it snake. For you. you can. <sighs> What are your simple pleasures? Well, fighting Metal Gear, swallowing a pack of cigarettes. Um, I don't know, what are my simple pleasures? Uh, my simple pleasures are, uh, for myself, I would say, uh, I don't know, is water skiing simple? I, I enjoy water that. Water skiing's awesome. I have you ever done skiing. barefoot water skiing? I have done barefoot water skiing. Is that wow. not the coolest? It's pretty badass. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. No, I'm a pretty good water skier. I slalom on the one ski. I've done barefoot. Cool. And, That's crazy, yeah. man. Uh, I like to draw. I like to sing. I play guitar. I mean, those are my those are my simplest Beautiful. pleasures. Beautiful, Beautiful man. Yeah. Well, well, this was delightful. It was such indeed. a pleasure to sit. We have to say Absolutely. thank you to Tasia Valenza. Thank you, Tasia. For Tasia. hooking us all up. She's Absolutely. such a doll. Um, she is. And we wish you so much abundance and happiness. And you're always thank welcome you. here. And I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys having me. And it was just a delightful interview. And congratulations on all your success. And thank, thank you. I wish thank it you. continues you. as long as it makes you happy. Yes, keep up with all of David's good stuff on Twitter at David B. Hater. Absolutely. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Hey, this is David Hader, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. So I just want to tell you, get out there and don't let the bastards get you down. Well, that concludes part two with David Hader. Um, man, what an amazing dude, right? So versatile. I have wow. never met anybody that's written like blockbusters before. I know, I know. So, so cool. creative. It's so cool to hear how his mind works. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty it's neat. Amazing. So, uh, hey guys, thank you so much for subscribing to our show. And if you haven't yet, please do it now. Yes. We're going to be back next week with a new episode for you. So stick around. Yes, and keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. This
visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.